Three, two, one, and we're live. I wanna give you guys five tips right now to prevent the summer slowdown and also 10 places to source online if you're in an area where you can't get good stuff. This show is for you, but I'm already seeing the complaining happening on Instagram and Facebook. People are complaining about slow sales. People are complaining about things not working, nothing is moving, and they're already panicking. And what they're doing is they're putting their entire store in auction. People are quitting. People are sending me messages like, hey, I can't make this eBay thing work. I'm going to need to get rid of my inventory. Do you want to buy it? Um, $40 for 40 things. Just come take it from me. Will you come uh, liquidate it? What, how can I get the most out of the tax donation? But I can hear people complaining already, and it's not even May yet. It's not even the summer slowdown. If you guys watch Terra Peak, we're not into the slow part yet. It's going to continue to decline until August. So if you guys aren't preparing for this, hopefully these five tips can really help you because it's only gonna get slower until August. I am preparing myself with this because I know it's gonna happen because it happened to me last year, my first year. So I'm not gonna let it happen again this year. Hope you guys are saving money because it's about to get slow. Okay, the first thing you need to realize, this is super important, is that sales do not grow linearly. Okay, so when you add more stuff to your store, your sales don't just immediately start going up. It takes a while because I think that these platforms actually do not want you, they want to prevent fraud. Um, so if you all of a sudden post, you know, 100 more items, it's not going to immediately translate in the sales. It's going to take a while for them to get used to it. So I would say wait at least one month before you start panicking because it's not going to immediately work like that. In fact, in my experience, <clears throat> growing your store makes your sell through rate go down, actually. So when you're small, you know all your items. It's stuff that maybe you personally owned. So of course your sell through rate is going to increase and be high because there might be a spaghetti stain that you knew you like, you can put that in the description on Thursday night. I spilled spaghetti on it. I couldn't get it out. So please take note of that before you buy it. That's going to make your sell through rate go up because people trust you and know you. Once you start buying stuff from thrift stores and you, maybe you'll hide in, in a certain kind of lighting, a defect or something, and then people get it, they're going to want to return it, which is going to affect your overall rating. Try to keep returns low, try to describe things accurately. If you start shipping slower too, everything is going to start declining. So make sure you keep your everything consistent in your store. eBay likes consistency. This is why the large stores have the same number of listings going live seven days a week. The store that I'm copying lists 100 items seven days a week. It's the same. They have 100 items ending and 100 items starting. They do auctions. There's a lot of different things they do to boost their ranking. And their auctions, get this, it's like $14.99 seven day auction or $15 buy it now or $49.99 or $50 buy it now. What they're trying to do is get the ranking from newly listed and soon to be ending. They want those double rankings. And, but the thing is they also don't want people who don't pay and people who are willing to bid $49.99 probably would just buy it um, at 50 buy it now. Um, so I think it's very important to just, set it up so that you don't have a lot of accounts receivable because that's going to kill you. If you're waiting for all these people to pay, when I was accepting best offers, it really hurt because so many people don't pay, right? I would say at least 10% of people do not pay. So if you have 10% of people who do not pay and you're waiting for that money, you can't be sold. It's really going to hurt you. So this is what I recommend. Do not auction your stuff if your sales are slow. Just decrease your pricing lower and lower and lower. One of the stores that I love the most is Apparel Save. They have two or three million feedback. I don't know if they're not on right now, but they are apparel saves um, close out section where they get rid of all the returns and such. And if you look at that website, they were decreasing items lower and lower and lower to the point where it was 99 cents plus shipping. Okay, because they do not want people to buy stuff without immediate payment turned on. So be careful. If your sales are slow and you have people not paying, then you're going to be one of those people maybe emailing me saying that you want to quit and give up. So um, don't do that. Also, big tip here, eBay throttles your traffic. I don't know if you guys know this. It's not like Amazon. So everyone gets a fair shot because they have best match and they have ending soon. That gives people who have a small store like you guys, you, you and I, to be able to compete with the big guys. And Amazon does not do that. Amazon, if you have the best price and the best item, they will sell it until it's sold out. They will not present people with the, with the worst price and um, lower ranking. That doesn't work on Amazon, but on eBay they do. So for example, you could be killing it, but they're gonna let um, 
you know, John Doe in a different state have a chance to get that sale by posting it higher. That's why you see so many people who just start and they're able to make a sale, which shouldn't be possible. If you look at solds, somebody will sell something for too much almost every single time. So the key actually is to have the smallest store you can with the best stuff. You should always be trying to make your store smaller, more replenishable, right? And increasing the quality of the stuff in your store. If you have a big store of nothing, then what you're, what's happening is they're, di they're diversifying your traffic to all those thousands of listings. And it's already not good to begin with. So now you're getting low traffic, low converting traffic, instead of you know putting the traffic that you do get into the listings that will sell. So remember, always try to make your stores more efficient, which is smaller items, smaller number of items, higher ASP. Both of those things are going to help you increase. Um, the next thing is uh, add some color to your store. I think this is super important. Start adding stuff to your store that's hype, really profitable. I mean, not necessarily profitable, even break even just to bring people to your store. Um, this I got from, I think this is a term used in England, but bring, putting color into your store is just putting like, things that are exciting, new, even if you break even. I am now adding in a bunch of Nike and Adidas and stuff. Just got ungated in Adidas on Amazon, so I'm starting to pepper that into both stores. And I'm gonna send it to Amazon and figure out how to do merchant fulfilled from Amazon a little bit, but uh, I'm sorry, uh, fulfillment by Amazon, but not FBA, just the regular shipping services, which Amazon has, so you can have them ship, but it won't be Prime. They'll ship it to your customer. And I'm thinking if I can get a lot of that stuff into the warehouse, out of my house, but it's good color in my store to bring people in because Nike is a powerhouse. Everyone looks for it. So I want to put that in there. Um, eBay, Poshmark, and um, this really scares me, um, but I'm going to start Mercari. Um, I'm going to wait until the end of uh, May for me to really ramp up Mercari because my Poshmark is growing, but I'm excited to diversify platforms. Now I'm not as worried about eBay being slow and eBay will turn your store off and turn your store on and do all this random stuff. They'll, they'll release gigantic features that are huge and take a long time to move through the system. So sometimes you'll have three days with no sales or really low traffic for some reason. The other platforms are smaller and don't have that crazy fluctuation. They will when they get bigger, but right now they're small and crispy, right? They're moving quick. So I want to diversify into multiple platforms so I don't have to worry about eBay. Um, also, I saw a bunch of people switch over to Poshmark uh, and quit eBay completely. And that's great because a lot of those were the same people who were auctioning up their items for super cheap and just panicking and just saying everything is 99 cents starting an auction. And then, you know, they'll sell 40 items and 30 of them won't pay. And then that person is dead. So don't be that person. Okay, let's get into um, where you can source now to get better stuff. A lot of people are like, hey, I live in Montana or I live in North Dakota and uh, we don't have Saks Fifth Avenue here. So what do we do? We're not like you. We can't find Patagonia every single time we walk into a Goodwill. Um, so if you don't live in California, I recommend you start sourcing online, right? If you don't find Gucci every single time you walk into a store like me, then you need to switch to a different type of sourcing. So here are 10 different places that you can buy stuff online that I recommend. Um, first one is Blue Lots, small, right? It's one of my favorite um, places to source, but they don't have a lot of stuff, but it's usually good. It's all brand new. We're not talking about salvage or uh, store return or stuff like that. It's just overstock. Um, you can also search, search overstock.com. Um, you can also source um, govdeals.org, which is the government's website. So if you have a local drug dealer who didn't pay his taxes, that stuff's going to go on to that site. Hopefully, what I would do is go on the govdeals.com and search what's around you so that you can drive there. Usually in the middle of the country, there are more of those. From my experience here, the ones are tough because it's so competitive to get stuff here. Um, because there's always good stuff at our thrift stores, there's a lot more people doing this and hunting. And whenever I do um, any kind of thing, there's like a five to one ratio of people in California that know what's up because there's just so many more people here and a lot of wealth here. Um, so government auctions, govdeals.org. And that's also where the post office lost packages go. So if you want to go there, I, I don't know Mark Meyer, uh, but Mark Meyer here is his handle. And he does this. He buys the baggage that gets lost at airports, which is super awesome, right? So if you can figure out how to get into that game and buy people's lost luggage, then you'll be finding a whole bunch of cool stuff to sell. Aqua just started on Mercari and Vinted. Awesome. I can't wait to get on the Mercari. Uh, it's so easy to list. I love every single new platform. It's just very, very streamlined. You can get on there quick. Okay, the next one is um, online storage auctions. I don't know if you guys know about this, but storage auctions are key. 
if you guys are on Instagram watching, I'm gonna be store, I'm gonna be doing store reviews after this on YouTube. So you're gonna to have to migrate because you won't be able to see the screen. Um, storage unit auctions happen a lot online. You can you know get a good idea and learn how to do it. If you can want to check out Wade's Ventures, we did a couple of shows on storage auctions. He does a lot of them. Make sure you have enough space to do it, but <clears throat> it's a great way to do it. Online storage auctions. There are uh, there are storage lockers everywhere in the United States. It's a good place to source. But most people don't know that you can bid on them online. Next thing is bulk. Bulk is a UPS version of lost packages. So you can go to bulq.com, check out that stuff. Um, next thing is via trading. Via trading is also interested in um, doing a deal with me. So if you guys want to look at viatrading.com and you find some stuff that you want to buy, they said they would give the people who watch my channel a discount. So if you like it, let me know. We'll get a group buy going. A via trading is cool. It's in LA. Um, Wade, I was just talking about you. Your um, nose must have been itching. I was telling people they can bid on storage auctions online. You do not need to go there. So maybe Wade can give some tips on um, how to bid on online auctions. But I see Wade actually in the hunt. Like he goes there and actually bids on them. So it takes a little bit of experience. Expect to lose money on a couple of them. You're not going to make money on every single deal. So um, always just keep learning. Um, you want to do shopgoodwill.org. Um, shopgoodwill.org is fantastic. I always go there and look for higher end designer stuff. I also look at swap.com because they're the same type of thing. So much stuff moves through there. You can get a good deal if you know what you're looking for in your niche. Um, local auctions, also great. You need to get into that. Um, local auctions for, um, you can do estate sales, you can do um, store closings, all that stuff happens everywhere. So just always keep a lookout. Don't just shop um, thrift stores. I recommend thrift stores is, is an area that is your last resort actually, because they charge a lot. You're kind of going to the middleman. You want to go directly to the people who are getting rid of the stuff. Next one is liquidation.com. And I don't know if you guys know about this one, but this is uh, Macy's liquidation.com. So if you go to Macy's liquidation.com, you can, if you have a reseller license, you can apply and just buy stuff directly from Macy's. That's one way to take a look. Um, that stuff is challenging for me. I'm just barely getting into the women's category. As you guys know, you know, like I used to live in New York city and Macy's, the women's section is like an entire city block wide and then the entire city block long and eight stories high. It's one of the biggest retail shops in the world. And so that's, just like basically women's and home goods. And then the guy section is like this cute little building next to it, right? So women's clothing is big. Macy'sLiquidation.com. If you know what you're doing when you buy women's stuff, go there. Uh, the most expensive stuff per um, area, I think is uh, bras. Bras, lingerie, that stuff's really light and really expensive. Those are gonna be the most expensive palettes. But now I'm going to hop back on the YouTube guys. So Instagram people, you won't be able to see. So if you want to continue this, I'm going to do some store reviews on the YouTube. So I'll talk to you guys on Instagram later. All right, YouTube. So let's go to, um, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, so let me know in the chat if you guys can see my screen real quick, and then I'll jump into the reviews. Looks all crazy. Let me know if you guys can see it in the chat. And if you see it, we'll get into the store reviews. Hopefully, I'm gonna assume you guys can see it. Okay, you can see it. All right, let's go. Let's roll. All right, let's see here. So we've got uh, first store is Soulfulness. This is, I don't know if this is you, Mike. All uh, right, wait, Mike, is this you? Uh, I don't know if it's you or not, but let's roll into it. So 1,399 items. Um, we have a 16% sell-through rate. And the way that I do that is this store has 684 sold. So you go down here to sold, click on sold, and it shows 683 now. Boom, got one since I last checked earlier. Um, and you divide that by three, which is the 90-day total. That's what we're looking at in the solds. And then divide that by 1,399. So 16.2 is fantastic. Um, the actual Tino, the sole advisor model for this is have 2,000 shoes in stock and sell 200 a month for four, $40 profit each. That's your six figures net on eBay. It's very hard to get there. It takes a couple of years. Once you have 2,000 in stock at $40 profit, you'll kill it. You can see in your um, items, you're not quite there yet um, to the $40 average profit, but that's okay. It takes a while. 
in the meantime, stuff between 40 and 60 bucks, in my opinion, sells much faster. So you want to get, you can get the 20% sell through rate if you're in the 40 to $60 range. And above that, it's going to drop because less people can afford it. So 16.2% is very strong already. Um, one thing I would omit is the dashes, colon, apostrophe. You can just use women instead of women, save two more spaces. I would get rid of size or use SZ in the title just to save space. And also this punctuation can actually make you uh, move down the ranking. So you want to eliminate and omit that kind of stuff. Um, other than that, the title looks fine. As far as the photography, your photos are okay. White background definitely helps you rank better on Google. Uh, Google will not show these photos unless they have to, right? If there's not that many items in it, they will. But if there's other pictures that are white background, they'll put, present those first. And a lot of people do not use eBay to shop, they use Google. So you want your ranking to show up quicker. Um, on the photos, I would center them more so that you can take up more of the space. You can see over half of the picture is this background. You wanna use as much of it um, as you can for the actual shoe. Um, and then scrolling down, you can see some of them are off center, like, um, actually this is pretty solid, but let me search by newly listed. Uh, I, I am, perfect. So like right here, this is not, this is me being picky, but you can see here that um, part of the shoe is cut off, right? So it makes it difficult for um, you to see the entire shoe. So I would just make a little bit more centered there. Um, let's see here. Photos are accurate. They're well lit. Let me just see the, um, the photos. I wonder if this is a rotating Lazy Susan. If so, awesome. Let's see here. You take a picture of the size, take a picture of the soles. Fantastic. No, this is perfect. So if you guys are selling shoes, you want to take a picture and basically in these angles. The classic store photo is actually this photo. It's actually just one shoe, which is just the right. But in my opinion, I like this one uh, better. So that's just my personal opinion. I like this photo as the profile. Um, or you guys can see mine's a little bit more funky on my page if you want to compare, but this looks great to me. Let's look at product mix. Your product mix is fine. I think one thing that I would add is more new. I'd add more new shoes. Um, you have only 25 new shoes, and when Q4 hits, you want to go. You want to go hard, so you don't have a ton of new. So I would start adding in more new as you get more capital because it's easier, and you'll find more than one quantity. I listed about two thousand dollars worth of shoes today in just four listings because you can add more stuff. You know, five of the same thing. Shipping policies. Um, I would get rid of restocking fees, um, and I would. Let's see. Do you do free shipping? I don't think so. Yeah, you don't. But your shipping is odd because you're not that far from me. Eleven seventy-five or nine ninety-nine for shipping seems a little bit high. It's also not a round number, so I'm not sure why it looks like that. Um, nine eighty-five, seven forty-five. This is obviously first-class mail, so I'm wondering if you're making a couple bucks on shipping. If you are, that's cool. But I like round numbers, like six ninety-nine or seven ninety-nine, like fourteen bucks for this. Seems fine, but this might fit into a medium flat rate. Um, what I did was I just switched everything to six ninety nine to keep it to, so I didn't have to spend as much time doing it. But whatever you want to do, it's not too far off. I just want it to be round numbers for me. Uh, your descriptions are, are clean. Let me just double check. Yeah, clean. Uh, I this is uh, off topic, but I do not like Ink Frog or Octiva or any third party because I feel like they put stuff in here that is not eBay friendly. Um, see, like, why does it? Like if I click this, it goes to something I need to sign in for. Like, I don't like that. Why is there an external link inside your, your thing that bothers me? So see every single one of your customers might click this and then yeah, have to log in to see something, which I don't like this. It doesn't make me feel comfortable. Okay. So that's it. If you have any other questions, reach out to me, but you're doing a great job. Your store is big. It's clean. Uh, all, all the pictures look the same. It looks like a professional store to me. It does not look like a hobbyist. You look like a professional eBay to me because you have over a thousand listings that look the same. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Alexander, what's up? Um, he wanted me to take a look specifically on electronics and um, we can do this. So you have a hundred and uh, let's see, 948 sold, very strong, 17% monthly sell through rate, extremely strong. Um, you wanted to stop doing clothing, but on your clothing, what I would do is make sure to put um, the gender as the second 
word, which you did switch to recently. These photos look great, fantastic. This right here, the right shoe, is the classic retail picture for you guys that are wondering. Foot Locker, all the big retailers use this photo. Um, but me, I prefer both shoes because you have enough space in the photo to do the full square. Photos are great. Um, you need more new stuff that's replenishable. So you're in this electronics game. So I would definitely recommend, I have some really good tips for you. For electronics, the best place to source, in my opinion, which I'm stealing from prints, wired by, wired by Biz, I'm giving out all his secrets, is to actually source on eBay or Amazon for eBay or Amazon. So if you look up this exact same thing, let's just test it and see if this works. Um, let's pull me. Desktop to USB. Let's see real quick. You can see seven people are selling this, right? And you can go through and see, is anybody selling a lot of them? So you have $25.99. Um, let me see sold, if somebody else has sold it. So what we want to do is find somebody with a ton of feedback, like tens of thousands of feedback, and then reach out to them and see if they can, if you can buy 10 or 20 of the same item. And sometimes you can find suppliers right on eBay for eBay. So I think that's a really huge hack that um, basically only, um, only Prince does that I know of. And he does about two to $3,000 a day with uh, just 96 listings. Okay, so 1,802, let's see. Um, replenishables are key in this game because the, pri the price of these items is sometimes really cheap. Your goal is to get eight to 10 suppliers um, that you know personally, you know where their families are, you know what they like to do for fun. You wanna be on that level with eight to 10 suppliers and that's gonna help you um, continue to get uh, replenishable supplies in and out. So even though Prince is in uh, New Jersey, a lot of his suppliers are here in, in California. So he doesn't even have a car, guys. So just to give you an idea of what's possible, he just sources all of his stuff on eBay. Check out his Instagram and you can see he's buying stuff on eBay to resell on eBay. Maxes out the eBay bucks and credit card points also. So let's see, you wanna use Terapeak in your category when you're selling uh, replenishables. eBay just bought them, so hopefully that software becomes free, but it's worth it for you to buy it and take a look at what's selling fast and then keep optimizing your listings. So what you wanna do is buy the stuff that they're selling right? And then sell it better than them. That's all. And you're already showing up number one in ranking on this item already. So you already know what you're doing. Your keywords are fine. Um, I would offer free returns and charge for shipping versus free shipping and charging for returns. And the reason is because eBay is pushing this free return thing really, really hard. So I've noticed an increase in flip flopping, but I would just experiment, maybe not do your entire store. Um, but just in my opinion, I think that you should charge for shipping and do free returns. Um, I think that they're ranking free return stuff higher. So take a look there, email me and let me know your exact income goals and maybe we can give a little bit more um, detailed feedback on your plan. So next one, eBay reseller. Right off the bat, I do not like the name eBay reseller because resellers have a bad tone. I'd rather you have an online store. And so when I, people ask me what I do, I say I have an online store. I don't say I'm a reseller because it sounds like you're the person that makes it so people can have a good Christmas because you're marking up Nintendo Wii 500%. So um, also e eBay is awesome for the reselling community, but I don't know if, if regular people think it's, think it's cute. Um, your sell-through rate is 14.6%. Again, excellent. All the people who are buying reviews generally have above 10% sell-through rate when the, per, when the average is only five. So great job. Um, let's take a look at your items. Um, a few of them are all caps. You want to not do that. Um, I thought that it would be good to do just the brand. And even the store that I'm copying does that. But eBay themselves, they say do not do that. So if you listen straight to, the, um, to what they say, they say don't use caps at all. Um, but your store looks good. Your photos are nice and clear. Maybe try to get it so that you have a bigger wall. But I understand that situation. Um, maybe a less wrinkled background if you're really being nitpicky. But and the way that I did was this background for me is actually taut. So you can stretch it on all four ends to keep it um, more, keep it um, more pure white. Also, you can put a light behind this sheet. And if you have an illuminated background, you're going to produce more crispy photos with a mannequin. 
Um, these look okay to me. I don't. I would maybe use SZ instead of size if you want more more keywords. Let's see. You have a nice mix of both expensive and cheap items because I, I see a lot of people who don't have stuff over sixty dollars. I think you should average between. 40 and 60 bucks minimum ASP if you really have a small store. If you have staff, you can have whatever ASP you want. You can have it be $5 ASP with free shipping if you have you know, millions and thousands and thousands of items to sell. But if you have a small store and you're doing it by yourself, I recommend high ASP. You have some random stuff in your store, I love it. So random stuff sells really slowly, it sells for about 5% a month. Brooks Brothers formal vest. Whoa, that's cool. Vintage Seiko. Really, really cool stuff. This stuff should sell at 5% per month. It's supposed to be really slow. And then the more common stuff, probably going to sell quicker. Also, things over $60 sell a lot faster. So I'm going to click on your solds and just scroll through real quick. I would guess a lot of expensive stuff is sold. Okay, here we go. So um, let's just search recent. Yeah, you can see here, the more expensive stuff may sell faster than cheaper stuff. That's just what I see. If you want to increase the stuff yourself, you're ready to start selling stuff that's 40 to $60 or above. It, starts, it sells a lot faster. Uh, wow, that's a great price. I feel like this is something you can get at uh, Marshalls or TJ Maxx. You're getting very strong prices. Look at this. I don't even think that's a brand. That's just a great keyword domination right there. Uh, Zenia trench coat, cool. So very, very cool. Um, I definitely would do free returns and charge for shipping. Again, that's just my my opinion. You can do whatever you like. Seems to be working okay for you. I would also rotate this picture um, because it looks funny to me sideways. I hope. That, I don't know if you follow Thrift Love Sell, um, but she kills it with this stuff. So. Um, Definitely look at the to Loretta on Instagram for some insight on how to sell those goods. Let's see what else. Um, right now, your store is a little small. It's 250 items. So let me know your exact questions and where you would like to be with your store so I can give you some more feedback on where you want to go exactly with this. Because I think I can help you, but I need a little bit more details on how to do it. Your store looks okay, and I love that you're using square photos. Okay, let's go to cotton button clothing what's up so 655 active uh 337 sold so 17 percent sell through is very very strong you've got the free shipping and free returns bomb excellent excellent way to do it um i love it because that is um very very good for the customer not necessarily good for you though so i kind of want you to charge shipping one way and i'd rather you charge shipping on the front end and do a combined discount for shipping, that was working for me. So like $6.99 for two or more items or something. All right, you can encourage people to keep looking and try to find more than one item to buy and you can save on shipping. Your sell through rate's great. Uh, let me see, you had mentioned that you're, it's difficult for you to find more expensive stuff. So that's why I recommend a couple of things. Either go through the 10 different places to source earlier um, or um, what you could do is get some staff and really bulk up this sort of cheaper stuff that you already know how to sell because 17 percent is excellent for just run-of-the-mill basic uh, mall brand stuff it's very very strong let's see is this i wonder if this is a live model looks like it if so that's kudos to you for doing that that's a lot of work um so I would say for you, the one of the keys is speed. You want to get as much stuff listed as possible if you have the cheaper stuff. Like there was a lady in my mastermind group that only had like the best stuff she could find was $12, but she had a really good listing habit and she listed 40 a day. So 40 a day, a $5 profit was still a 200 bucks that she needed to kill it. So um, this depends on, on your your exact goal. So email me how much money you're trying to make and how much money you're making right now. And hopefully we can draw a mo roadmap up. I use materialworld.co for their clothing list. So that's the list that I use to buy from. So you probably are missing brands that you don't know. So I would look through that list. It's a free bolo list. Take a look there. Also, you need to start buying wholesale and then reach out to me with the exact stuff that um, you're looking for. I could probably supply you with $30 stuff um, that costs eight or nine bucks. Um, that's more fancy brands that you can mix in here, but your stuff looks pretty good. Um, 
Let's see, your photography is very clean. There's not a lot of dark spots in it. I would go square photos because I want you to cross promote on um, at least Poshmark because this stuff sells really well, especially juniors. Let's see here. I definitely add more shoes, accessories, and outerwear. I don't see any of that in your store. Shoes, accessories, and outerwear, and I would stop selling men's stuff completely. This is like, for me, garbage. I, I have thousands of dress shirts and polos that do, don't sell. The market is just so flooded right now. Uh, I'm having difficulty selling this exact polo for $9 shipped. So very rough right now in the men's category. Um, it's not as weak on Poshmark though. So I would maybe try it there. Um, watch my video on how to cross promote on both platforms. Let's see here. All right. Well, that looks pretty good. Um, your selfie rate again, 17% for just selling stuff that's run of the mill. Very strong. Let's go to the next one. Honest work. What's up, Torin? Your 90 days sold. This you have a 58% sell through rate. Um, guys in the chat, how much are you guys um how much are you guys listing? Or what's your sell through rate right now? If you guys have any ideas, um, take a look at it because um this this person has a 58% sell through rate, which is ridiculous. That's half their store sells every single month. Um, we have Teresa in the chat. Imagine if half your store sold every month, that would be insane. So 125, let's click on sold so you guys can verify. Anytime somebody has more sold than they have active, they're killing it. Cause that means that it's already automatically over 33%. Free shipping, free returns. Um, it's hard for me to give you advice when your sell through rate is like literally twice as high as mine. So you should be giving me advice. The only thing I can notice right away is like it's a little bit cheap. That might be one of the reasons why your stuff's selling so fast. Cause I just, I sell this exact same shoe for 40 bucks. So you're at $22. So I guess it just depends, but, um, good, great sell through rate is king because, um, cash flow is great. You can pump this into other stuff. You have some cheap stuff, but I think. Overall, your stuff looks a tiny bit cheap to me. You're a great picker. No one has that kind of sell-through rate without great picking skills. Um, with your photos, I would try to make it so that they're more centered. You're losing a lot of space. This is only like 20% of the whole photo is your item. It's kind of small. So, But again, you should be teaching me because your, your sell-through rate's tremendous. Let's see, your mix is great. You've got items that are cheap, you have items that are expensive. Uh, I would almost stop selling stuff under 20 bucks unless you're just getting rid of clothing locally uh, because you are already a great picker. I would just say go to three or four times more stores and just pick up more stuff if that's possible. Um, because you, if you can sell items like this, then you should have an entire store that's over $40 because I would not know to pick up that conga drum and sell sell for 145. That's some serious picking skill. Um, I would pass on this even if it was five dollars at the thrift store, probably. Love the shoe game. You could have probably gotten more for these, especially size 12. Um, let's take a look at your descriptions and see how clean they are. Perfect. I love this. Look how crispy this is. Um, shipped secure with one business day handling. Awesome. People love hearing that. Uh, please look through the pictures. Maybe one more sentence like, thank you for supporting small business or shopping small business, but otherwise great, great photos. Um, I would do a little bit, the more crispy you get with photos, the, the more people are willing to buy from you. But again, these are very clean, very accurate. Don't need to be fancy on eBay. You can see this person sells 60% almost of their items each month. So let me know exactly what your goals are. Like, are you trying to uh, make more money per uh, with the same size store? Do you want a bigger store? Do you want to source higher things? I need a little bit more help because everything is fine. Your titles are excellent. Photos are fine. They could be pure white, but I think this may, this may actually not qualify for um, Google's ranking unless there's not enough inventory. When there's not enough inventory, it doesn't matter. All pictures show up on search. Um, I know because all you have to do is type in, yeah, let's actually just experiment real quick. I'm gonna glide six. Let's try Google guys. We can actually do this from time to time and just see. Nike Lunar Glide six. But look, these are, these are the first five are white photos, right? But let's take a look here. You'll see like, this isn't white. This is definitely not white. Um, these aren't white. 
So like, obviously see how the first ones are all white background. This is why I recommend you guys do white because they're gonna show this stuff first. Their algorithm can pick it up. But the exception is that black background one because I think that they know that um, it's hard to see, right? But even that though, you can see right next to it, they showed a white on white um, earlier in the search. So definitely keep that in mind, guys. Okay, photos look fine. Um, pure white does give you a higher search ranking. Let's see. Yeah, email me exactly what you're looking for at 10kontheBay at gmail.com and um, let me know your exact goals and I'll make sure that I get to it and uh, help you with a little bit more detailed information specific to you. Okay, let's go to the last store. Jeff, what's up? Um, Jeff is the first person in this group that probably needs a little more help with sell-through rates. So you got 111 sold with 487 listed. That's a 7.5% sell-through rate. And that is still above average. Most people on eBay are 5%. Uh, because they don't optimize any of the stuff that we're talking about. So titles, I would put brand first. So sometimes you have um, MSRP first. This is actually, I prefer this, but um, I think if you're trying to get your, your ranking up, just do what eBay says, which is brand first. Uh, let's see here. I love Brooks. This is priced way too high. This is why I price new ones at. Um, hmm, maybe because of the size. It depends what GTS model this is. I sell a lot of Brooks shoes, so um, I feel like this is a little high. I sold the same, a similar pair for 49 bucks yesterday. Um, I, as a, this is, seems like way, way, way too high. Your pricing is already too high. It's at or above market on a lot of stuff, which is gonna make your sell-through rate horrible. It's so competitive on eBay. You have to make sure that you're on point. Your photos don't have a lot of white space around the item. So you can see they're, they're kind of cut off, which looks a little bit unprofessional. Um, like you want to make sure the entire item is in the photo if you can, otherwise it looks a little bit amateur ish. Um, but again, it shouldn't hurt yourself through rate that much right now. The big key in your store is pricing. It's priced too high. And a lot of it is clothing, which makes it more difficult. These shoes seem okay on pricing, maybe a little bit high sheepskin. Hmm. Kohan grand OS. That's nice. So you can see this. Photo, I can't see the back of the shoe. And on this photo, you want to start, sort of uh, make it a little bit more clean looking. Like, like, see, this is the classic photo. And then, let's see, these aren't very good either. This is okay, but you still can't see the back of the shoe. I'd like to be able to see more like this. This is really solid, in my opinion. You can see both sides of the shoe and the back. Right? It's a clean way to display it. Uh, let's go through here. Your prices are too high. I would add MSRP, like if I search by Neil in your store, I would add MSRP if you can to the front or back um, so people know how much it costs, right? I wanna get an idea. Is this a $500 blazer? I wanna know before I click in. Is this a, I'll see like $99 pair of pants for $44, I love it. Now here's the part that where eBay is kind of broken. You see this was, it says 30% off, but actually, this is 50% off of the MSRP, but it only says 30%, off, which doesn't sound like as good of a deal, right? So it's kind of fuzzy to me. That's why I like putting it in the title and I don't run sales because for me, it's confusing to the buyer. There's no MSRP strike through. Like this strike through right here is on a made up price. It's not the MSRP. So when you go to walk into a regular store, they have the strike through on the, the main price. Let's see here. I think you have a great product mix um, of high and low items. And I think you're suffering from, your photos look different in every single photo, which definitely slows you down. You wanna have one area of your house or apartment where you take photos so that everything looks the same. So it's easier. Like if you look at Mike's store, right? Everything is the same. So even though it's not pure white background, it looks like a store to me. So you definitely wanna get into that habit. This is This is better. But again, you need a little bit of white space around it so it looks uh, more professional. Let's see. Oh, this is something that is going to hopefully help you. You have a lot of terms in your description. Let's see if we can find it right here. Nobody reads this, and this is this is all going to confuse e eBay's algorithm. You want to make it as clean as possible. You look at a lot of sellers in their description. It's like one or two sentences. Let's look here. 
right? Um, like this is just fast and free shipping, one sentence. No one has time to read through all this. This is gonna make me not wanna buy from you because it's too many terms. It's like, please buy from me unless it's one of these things. This is a lot to read through. Um, you wanna just put, thank you for buying from us. Payments and shipping and refunds are already in this second tab. Um, and let's see if you offer free returns. You do not. So I would offer free returns and no restocking fee. So to, in order to do that, re, no restocking fee, because you're already charging for shipping. That means if somebody were to return this, they would have to pay return shipping on 1637 and have a 20% restocking fee. So you're looking at 13 They would get $7 back after they paid 24 No one is going to have confidence when they're buying at that amount because it's like, damn, I only get 7 bucks back if I, if I don't like it. That's not going to give buyers a ton of confidence. So maybe adjust that a little bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, again, this is a little bit too long on those on on that description. So make sure that that is lower. So that's a, that's a few things to change. I would your titles look okay. Maybe add the pricing. Um, I would go square photos if you can, um, and then make sure that they're all consistent. So it looks a little bit more like a store. And then um, your product mix is fine. I would do free returns. I love the flat six ninety nine shipping. That's exactly what I do. But let's hopefully get yourself your rate up at least double to fifteen percent on the same stuff, and then hopefully you're cross selling this stuff on Amazon. Okay, let me see if I can get back. What's up, guys? Let me go to here and see if I can answer any questions from you guys real quick. Thank you for tuning in. Let me see here. Um. Let's see. Terms of service are turn off, be concise and simple. Agreed. Um, what's up, Stacy? See if you guys have any questions, put them in the chat and I will answer. You have a Brooks shirt for nine bucks. I don't think Brooks shirts sell that well. They, they're just known for their running shoes. Uh, Teresa says all caps and title won't show up in Google search. They don't show up in Google search, but they search, they show up just fine in eBay search. Oh, yeah, Mike, that's your store. Awesome. Um, it's set the calculated shipping and there's a flat medium rate available on all items. Awesome. Cool. Cool. When I recommend doing free 30 day returns. Yes, I do. Uh, and I don't do best offer on items. I know will sell, but most of the time doesn't, it doesn't go that way. Um, uh, eBay, my maps tells me you've sold 1815 items in recent weeks. Awesome. $23 ASP. What's up, Hip Flip and Mama? Um, thank you for tuning in again. But yeah, all right, guys. I'm going to take off. Thank you so much. If you guys want a store review, you can buy one um, on my eBay store. I'll put the link in there a little bit later today. Um, and they're 24 bucks. And if you like it or you don't like it, let me know. I can offer a full refund if you're not satisfied for any reason. But again, I just put the how I do the re reviews in the description below. So if you guys want to do your own or you want to find somebody in the chat to review you for free, I recommend you get a store review all the time. I'm constantly having people give me tips and updates and, hey, you can get more money if you added this keyword or maybe try this or maybe try that. Always switch it up. Keep adjusting your store. eBay likes an active store. Everybody have a great weekend and I'll see you guys later. Peace.